Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since, uh, since I've made a video, but hopefully I should be able now to start and making regular videos and to ease things out into the channel. Today I'm gonna do a simple repair attempt of these two LED lamps that they belong to my father. As you can see, I've already taken down them down to pieces and the complaint from my father was that they stopped working with the bank and when I opened them up, I could see that on both of them, the electrolytic smoothing capacitors have been blown off uh, the casing. So you can see this is the capacitor layers and this is the shells that the uh, they popped off. Both of them have been really difficult to identify what the value is, but I think I've narrowed it down to 47 microfarads, 250 volts, if we are correct, but it might also be that these are just 50 volts rated capacitors, and that would explain why they have blown. So the lights are running on 220 volts and then there is a certain voltage that is uh, being generated and dropped through the capacitor on the LEDs so we would need a capacitor that has a higher rating unfortunately even though I have quite a lot of capacitors none of them match the values because most of them are just low voltage capacitors that I use for everyday projects I do, however, have these ones. These are 6.8 microfarads, but they are rated at 400 volts. So I'm gonna attempt the repair with these ones and we'll see how the lamp, lamp behaves uh, afterwards. I'm guessing that the, there might be a slight flicker from, uh, from the LEDs once we replace them with a the smaller value capacitor, but I don't think it will be anything major or noticeable. But We'll see. Well, I'm gonna attempt it anyway and we'll see how it goes. The lamp circuit is built on an aluminum PCB so it might be a bit tricky to uh, flow solder onto it but I'll try to mix it with some of the lead solder that I have. Hopefully we will be able to reduce the temperature, the melting temperature and we should be able to remove them. Yep, so here, here are the remains of that capacitor. Let's clean up the holes. Now, one of the problems with the new capacitors is that I don't know what the original orientation was, so for that we're gonna check the onboard uh, bridge rectifier and we're gonna align the capacitor according to it. Yeah, I don't know how much you can actually see that on camera, but the plus side is marked on this side. So the longer lead of the capacitor, the positive side, I'm gonna align with that. And to prevent any excess heat uh, getting at the capacitor, I'm gonna leave it a bit uh, away from the PCB. So let's solder one of the legs first so we can align it properly. So basically just like that you could see that there is a bit of a gap between the PCB and the capacitor. Hopefully that should uh, prevent an excessive heat being transferred to it. Let's now solder the other leg. And before trying it out, I'm gonna try to clean up whatever is inside. I don't know where my father used them, but they're a bit dirty. I think that they, they were running outside. And we're gonna plug them into a outlet and see if, they, if it works. Okay, so I was able to find the socket. And now let's, here's the one that we changed, all cleaned up. I'm gonna pop the PCB back inside and I'm gonna screw it inside the base. So when I flip the switch, let's see what happens. Nothing happens. Okay. So I'm guessing maybe a diode 
has blown. Yeah, look like it. Let's try and replace the capacitor on the other one. See, see if that one will work. Okay, so here is the other one also replaced. Let's see if that one will work. And if not, then maybe we can dig a bit deeper and see why it doesn't work. Okay, turning it out now. Nope, unfortunately, this one does not work either. So let's see if we can understand why. Okay, so immediately after trying to look more closely to the circuit, I noticed that this one, the first one that we soldered has actually a cold solder joint on one of the input wires. I don't know how that translates to the camera, but let's solder that on and see if that makes any difference. Yeah, so unfortunately that didn't fix the issue. Neither of the LED bulbs actually work. I was able to confirm only a single working LED. And all of the rest are either showing short circuit or showing uh, open circuit, meaning that probably what caused the capacitors to blow in the first place was the avalanche effect of uh, failing LEDs and increasing uh, voltage on the capacitor because when an LED uh, in such style light bulb, when an LED fails with uh, being just short circuited, then the voltage basically that the LEDs will need to run on increases. And I guess that's what caused the capacitors to blow. And it's the same on this one where none of the LEDs are actually working. So that would conclude today's video. Unfortunately, this was a failed repair attempt, but we were still able to at least look at the construction and investigate and maybe even learn something uh, regarding the LEDs. If you like this type of video, then I have a full playlist with repairs, so be sure to check it out, subscribe for more, and starting next week, I'm gonna try to upload regularly every week, and I'm gonna do a video every week on a topic um, on all the letters of the English alphabet. I'm doing this challenge uh, together with one of the YouTubers. I'm gonna link it down below. It's called Alphabet Superset. So. A bunch of people will all publish their work once per week, uh, doing um, working on topics uh, from A to Z. So it should be fun. Expect to learn some new things and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.